Hello everyone and welcome to another video. Now if you're looking to build a cheap PC in 2022, then you might want to consider an older Sandy Bridge Core i5 from Intel. Now it's fair to say that these days the older Core i5 chips aren't as capable as they once were and you might find yourself having a little bit of trouble when it comes to playing modern games. The lack of hyper threading for example and the four physical cores may mean that some newer titles will exhibit some stutter or will just generally offer lower frame rates on average altogether. However, if you're looking to play older or less demanding titles, the cost of some of these older Sandy Bridge chips, especially when you consider the cost of the motherboards as well, may mean that they remain pretty tempting. And if you can get a motherboard and CPU combo for less than £50 or dollars, well, it may be worth putting something together even these days. You might be thinking then that a chip like this, the i5-2390T, would be a decent low cost investment. After all, it just cost me a few pounds a few days ago. And when paired with a motherboard that I found secondhand on eBay, I spent around 30 pounds all in all for this combination. That said, this little i5 has a secret. You may assume that this 2390T is a decent quad core option, right? Wrong, because this i5 actually has just two cores. And it's the first i5 since the Westmere CPUs, I believe, the i5 650, 660, 670, just to name a few, that actually has two cores and four threads. I mean, this thing only came out about a year after the last of the first Gen i5s, but even so, it's easy to mistake this for a quad core these days because every other Sandy Bridge i5 and every i5 since then has at least four physical cores. Not this thing though. And today I wanted to see how that actually impacts gaming performance. Don't be fooled by this i5 because you may think, if you see one online, that it's a quad core CPU unless otherwise stated, but it's not. Two cores, four threads. How bad can it be? Well, let's find out. Okay, so let's start with Deathloop. The 2390T, by the way, is a low power desktop processor, hence the T suffix at the end of the name. And oh boy, the uh, two cores of this thing are really showing their, well, not necessarily age, but I guess just a lack of oomph in modern titles. I can't be sure on how a Sandy Bridge quad core would compare to be quite honest, but I'm sure it would do better than this. Now there are instances where this game will run okay, as you can see, 30 FPS just then, but as soon as we get into crowded areas, yeah, 22 FPS, 20 FPS, that explosion just absolutely killed more than the NPCs there, it killed my frame rate as well. Maxing out the CPU usage pretty much, it's running about 50 degrees, 50 to 60 degrees, more like 50 to 55, so it does stay relatively cool. I've got it paired with a GTX 1080 Ti, the best GPU I own that will work in this motherboard, and actually come to think of it, the best GPU I own anyway, right now. Deathloop then, not really playable. I am of course using settings as I am with all the games that would otherwise work fine with a 1080 Ti. This is nothing that this card couldn't handle when paired with a more capable processor. Let's move on to Fallout 4, I think we'll try next. All right, so here we are in Fallout 4. We're walking through Concord here. Things are pretty smooth. Oh wait, no, they're not. I thought things were going relatively well, but once again, the CPU usage is hovering around 70 to 100%, so not as bad, come to think of it, as Deathloop before. Let's just wipe out some Raiders here. Now the game is certainly more than playable, with this chip. The 1080 Ti isn't the best pairing in the world for it, but it does mean that we can hit the maximum potential that the CPU offers. It's clocked at 2.7 gigahertz, I believe, and boosts up to 3.5, so not bad. If it had four cores, it wouldn't be any worse than, say, the 2320, I don't think, but the two physical cores are really what holds this thing back. It's probably nothing to do with the clock speed. I'm going to go down here now and see if we can wipe out someone else. No one seems to be about. As we're moving away from that busier area, 60 FPS isn't too uncommon, but if we approach these settlers over here, I know I'm not supposed to shoot them, they are friendly, but sometimes I just can't resist. Let's see how this affects our frame rate. Sorry Angie and Fred, oh and Jules, 
but uh, your time has come. The frame rate is still holding up pretty steady as we mow down these pedestrians, but there are one or two instances I'm noticing, especially with the percentile figures or the frame times that aren't ideal. The experience here isn't consistent by any means. Okay, so here we are in Elden Ring and immediately, yeah, the frame rate is pretty unbearable, around 20 FPS. The CPU didn't hesitate to hit 100% usage there, running at about 50 degrees once again, so not too bad. 51 now, 100% usage on the CPU. Two cores, even those with hyper-threading, really aren't that usable in 2022, especially when it comes to gaming. We've tested the new Pentium G7400 as well, um, and even that does have problems. Despite how good those Golden Cove cores are, and they really are quite something, two cores is just too much of a limitation these days with modern games. Let's wipe out a few more of these guards here, and then we'll venture on further down the hill and see if our frame rate improves. Where are you, mate? Okay, let's approach him and hit him with a sneak attack. Yes, take some of that. I haven't really got that much better at Elden Ring. I play it sometimes on the PS5. I played quite a lot of it on the PS5 when it came out. And believe me, I am just as terrible on that platform as I am on PC. Let's continue down over here then. Just wipe him out. There we are. And you're done. You're gone. Right, so I'm going to venture down the hill now just to see how this more sort of open area impacts our frame rate. Things aren't really improving beyond 20 FPS, 19 now, it's actually dropping a little bit. I'm not sure if the weather affects this as well, but there we are, take that. Jump attack doesn't always work, but there we go. Elden Ring seems to be pretty unplayable on the i5, it's what I expected, and I'm sure you guys expected it as well. Quick shot of the health potion there. Let's go find some other guys to mess around with, and I'm sure in a matter of moments, he will get his entire army on me as is always the case i will then try and run away but i'll probably be killed within about five minutes there we go another one down all right let's move on all right so here we are in fortnite once again 100 percent usage on the cpu the frame rate my goodness oh oh the game just completely jammed there that is not going to reflect well on the percentile lows i'm sure the one and one one and point one percent low sorry will be reading about one each but the exact figures will of course be up on screen when it comes to editing now this is going to make it quite difficult i think to actually wipe out any enemy players and i'm sure we'll find out shortly just how horrible it is to play in a competitive situation but first let's slide under here and pick up this shotgun that i've spotted let's go the average isn't actually too bad it's just the lack of physical cause that is causing us to suffer here the 1080 Ti barely being utilised, about 20%, and it's not really running that hot either because it's not having to do any work. Anyone around? Doesn't look like it. Oh, there's someone. Come on. Come on. And look, look at it. Come on. Look. Oh, it's frozen. <laughs> now, I have said in the past that two strong cores can be fine in Red Dead Redemption 2, but it seems as though these two cores aren't strong enough. I have played this on a Pentium G7400, the new 12th gen Pentium, which also has two cores and four threads, and the game runs fine even in busier areas like Sand and E here. The i5-2390T on the other hand, well, it's a bit of a disaster. It's not often that we see 30 FPS. We're actually hovering at around 20 to 25 most of the time. The average is okay, but it's a similar story to the rest of the games whereby the 1 and 0.1% figures are pretty awful and you're not really going to have an enjoyable experience with the Xbox One X equivalent settings that I'm using here. I think any settings are going to prove quite limiting due to the issues with the CPU itself. Let's just drive my stolen buggy around this corner and see what happens. Right, we'll get off the controls are weird. I think it doesn't help, the no frame rate. Let's, let's see what you've got, sir. Give me your money. 71 cents look at that you keep persisting and eventually they will whoa 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 where are you going right let's stop oh let's stop the witness actually before we get the police on us where is this witness running to come on i've got to stop her i'm calling out she's not stopping come on stop right there whoa whoa was that me or was that the i think that was the cops was it 
did they just shoot their own witness? No. <laughs> well, all right, well, <laughs> okay. That, I wasn't expecting that. Well, I don't know if that was me or not, but yeah, see, I, I'm still having fun here. I'm still having a certain amount of fun with this game, but you can't put it out of your head or get it out of your mind that there are frame rate issues. It's always in the background. It's always noticeable, if you get what I mean. Finally then, let's try out The Witcher 3. We're in the middle of Novigrad here. As you can see, the frame time graph doesn't look too hot at the moment. 90% CPU usage in these busier areas. I can't believe I used to play on a Pentium G3258. I swear it used to be better than this, but it might just be the fact that it was the best CPU I had owned in a long time, and I was pretty happy with 30 FPS, given that my PS4 couldn't handle anything better in a lot of titles, but I probably also implemented a frame rate cap. Don't get me wrong, it really isn't that bad at all. You know, if you were to implement a cap and let's say 30 FPS, then these frame time dips wouldn't be as noticeable or as significant. They wouldn't feel as significant anyway. They would still happen, but it wouldn't be as bad as just letting things run uncapped. If you are on a budget though, it would make far more sense to get a 2320 or 2400 because it probably won't actually cost you any more money in 2022, not that much more anyway, and you'd certainly feel the benefits of it. More so, a 2600K for example, which has 4 cores and 8 threads, that would be really beneficial, especially in newer games, although there might still be a few problems. Let's just wipe out the bandits here and look at that dodge dim. Let's wipe him out and then we'll end the video. There we go. So overall, as I said, the 2390T, not a good purchase in 2022. Don't be fooled by it because if you're looking at Sandy Bridge i5s, it's easy to assume that all of them are going to have four cores. But as I found out a few days ago, that wasn't the case. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed it, leave a like, leave a dislike if you didn't. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so already. And hopefully I'll see all of you in the next one.